Hey man, family. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful day. It's still beautiful since the last time I was up here. We love that. Um, so the title of my communion today is called Persistent Faith. And a scripture that we're all maybe too familiar with is Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, For it is by the grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. So if you want to make it to heaven, if you want to live a godly life in the kingdom that belongs to Him, well then you need to have persistent faith. And I love just coming out here every Sunday and just being a part of all of you every day because we have such firm examples of persistent faith. Amen. You know, Wendy and Chantel just moved over here and here they are. Go. Persistent faith. Our sister Lisa Robillard, she's she's going up and down here and there. And she's awesome. You're awesome, sis. Persistent faith. And, and, and that's what it's about. So please turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. Come on, Mike. We we'll go to verse 39. If you want to make it. You'll need persistent faith. That's right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39. It says, Amen. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Yes. Wow. You see, when you follow Jesus, when you, when you study the scriptures, not because someone sat you down and they said, here, listen to me, but when you study the very words of God for yourself and you choose to follow Jesus, you choose to be a disciple, a Christian, well then, then when you have faith, you are saved and you do not shrink back. Yeah. Now you may fall. Actually, yeah. you will fall. Yeah. But you repent. You get right back up and, and you go harder than you were before. Yeah. And, and the, the following verse in chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And you know, you got to really chew on that verse. Uh, I know I, I've been chewing on that a lot. Uh, I was like, man, like, uh, it kind of just warps my head. I don't know why. Uh, but I was just really, really looking at it. Uh, and it. And what it tells us is that faith and hope, they're different. So you can, you can hope for all these good things. God even tells us He has plans to give you hope. But you're not going to get there unless you have the faith, the confidence. And you're not going to get there without being fully assured in God. Yeah, come on, uh, and, and, and really what you don't know is ahead of you. Your future and you really, there, you don't know. We've never, uh, anyone seen the face of God yet? No. I haven't either. But one day, amen. amen. So turn with me now to Luke chapter 18. Come on, bro. Let's go. And we're going to go through this whole chapter. Okay. Um, I'm very grateful just to, I've been given this opportunity to preach and also the opportunity, uh, part of the uh, our church here, International Christian Church, we're a, a movement-wide denomination, oh, yeah. or non-denomination church. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh, and, and we have, it's amazing because we have an a international college of Christian ministries. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Come on, ICCM. A, a good amount of us are, are a part of that, uh, and another good amount are thinking of pursuing that. Amen. You know, get advice, talk about it, you should do it. Uh, and, and so a part of our assignment is we have a, a to give a, a, a sermon yeah. on, on a chapter. And so all of us have to give it on Luke chapter 18. And so that's, that's the reference point for you guys. Okay. But that's, that's on, it. Bro. <laughs> it's about persistent faith. On, bro. And so in order to do this, we need to know what does faith even look like? Come on, bro. We got to know what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So 18, verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, that she won't eventually come and attack me. Wow. He was scared. 
And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Wow. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Mm. You know, Jesus, he gives us a, a parable and it's summed up just with one thing. You should always pray and not give up. Yeah, come on, bro. So you should always be praying more than you do anything else. Yeah. Wouldn't you all rather be talking to our God, our Father, more than you talk to anyone else? Yeah, come on, bro. Only He will really be able to know what's deep in your heart and help you out that way. Come on, bro. And from reading this, uh, you know, it's awesome because we get this this picture of this guy, this unjust judge, and he's just he's annoyed. He's like, oh my gosh, like. This woman keeps bothering me. And, and, you know, sometimes, you know, we get that same way too. You know, either we're the one bothering someone or they're the one bothering us. And you're just like, yeah, let me do my thing. Just leave me alone right now. But then eventually you're like, fine. Okay. Okay. I'll help you. I'll, I'll do like whatever you're asking for. You know, you, you give in. And he says, look, if this is what an unjust man will do, if this is what uh, uh, an, someone that doesn't even care for people will do, well, how about God? Mm. Will he not listen to those, his select people, that cry out to him day and night? Yeah, come on, bro. That's awesome. And that's how we need to pray. We got to cry out. Look at Hebrews chapter 5. Take it there, bro. Come on, bro. Let's it go. says we need to cry out loud day and night. And Hebrews chapter 5. Gives us a good insight as to why we need to do that. Preach, bro. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Come on, bro. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Verse 11, We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. Wow. Okay. Sheesh. Come on, bro. Fervent cries and tears is how Jesus Christ prayed. And He was God Himself. How do we need to pray? Wow. Wow. Come on, bro. All right, now. You know, when I looked up what, it, what fervent is in Greek, it says that it's an intense passion. It, it, it literally translates to being loud, to being mighty and having a forcible prayer that, that you got to force it out. Wow. You're like, I'm going to yell. I don't want to yell. Why would I yell right now? I'm just sitting in my car. But I'm going to yell. And I'm extremely grateful for our awesome sister, Jeannie McGee. Hey. Just this past Tuesday uh, at our staff meeting, we were just talking about this. And it was super encouraging because she gave me just awesome advice. Uh, you know, because I'd always read this, like, oh, cry out loud and... You know, I'd just be like, oh, Father God, you know, like, and that was like the max of it. And, and Jeannie, she tells me, she's like, you need to get to a place all by yourself. You need to grab a, a blanket or a pillow if you have to. You got to bury your face in there and just scream to the Lord. Mm. Just let your heart go to the one that truly, truly cares for you. Come on, bro. It's awesome. And it says, praying like this, justice will come quickly. You know, our Father, He cares for us. But, but if, we're, if we're really struggling, if it seems like things aren't going the way you envisioned it, the way you thought, the way you hoped for it to happen, well then, you need to cry out more. You gotta cry out louder. You need to actually have tears when you pray. And, 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 and it's, it's hardcore because it says, however, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith here on earth? Mm. And so the problem is that you don't have faith. It's that you no longer try to even understand. Wow. You've read these verses how many times that you don't obey them. Yeah. Wow. Tells you to cry out loud just like Jesus did. So what does faith look like? Let's continue reading verse 9. All right. Come on. Let's go, Mike. It says, To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, 
God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. If I fast twice a week, or I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get, but the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. What does faith look like? It looks like humility. Amen. Yeah. Knowing just who you are. And who are we? Sinners. Yeah. Nothing but a sinner. That's right. Let's keep reading. Verse 15. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So we know we're all sinners. You got to know that. You got to fess up to that. That's how you got you to you realize who you are. And then understand that, that God, he sees you as his child. Amen. He sees you as this little hopeless child that is just in some need right now. Because you are a sinner. You do mess up. You continue to mess up. So just, just come here. And, and he, he makes that regard kind of to the Pharisee, like, don't hinder these people. Don't, 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 be, don't accredit yourself your own righteousness. Don't compare yourself to others. Come on, Michael. And it's, it's powerful because, you know, the Pharisee, he doesn't know his position before God. He says, I, in this prayer, multiple times, four times, whereas the only time uh, the tax collector says, I, is when he says, look, I'm a sinner. That's who I am. And something I, uh, I just read when I read this uh, after I'd read uh, this other chapter. So turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 7. And I'd read this previously. And so when I, I read uh, Luke 18 here, I was like, wow, like this I thing, is this true? Because 2 Samuel chapter 7, it talks about, uh, it talks about, about David, King David's prayer. And I was like, okay, well, let me. Let me fact check. Like, how many times did he say I? You know, I, I got to know, is this, is this like, is this true? And sure enough, check it out. So 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 18, David's prayer. It says, then, da then King David went in and sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I, sovereign Lord? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of your house of your servant and this decree sovereign lord is for a mere human what more can david say to you for you know your servant sovereign lord for the sake of your word and according to your will you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant you see david he knew his position before god he's like who even am i yeah. to, to know all of this to have the the words of God, to know what the prophet spoke. It's like, how, how am I to know that, that you actually have a plan for me? You see, David, he, he says, I'm just a mere man with a God-given plan. And, and he was delighted. He's like, this is a great thing. I'm just a human being. I don't deserve this. And so we need humility in order to know what faith looks like. And we need to have prayer to know what faith looks like. So, after that, now you're starting to get a basis, all right, you have some, you have some faith, right, you know, you're praying, you're, you've changed it up, and, and now you know, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not on top of the world the way I might have thought I was. And I speak this just in regards to myself, of course. Uh, and and now, now the question is, well, really, how great is your faith? How great is your faith? So, turn with me uh, back to Luke chapter 18, and we're going to continue reading here. So Luke chapter 18, how great is your faith? I'm going to start reading at verse 18. It says, a certain ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It's like, oh baby, here's the question. <laughs> like, there's the guy, that's him. 
Heaven, I want to go. How do I get there? Teach me, show me, do whatever you got to do. And Jesus is like, oh, okay, I like this guy. Bold, right? And he says to him, why do you call me good? Why do you call me good? He's like, do you understand what you're saying right now? Do you understand your position? Because they, you wouldn't just call anyone good. No, what, what, what the man here, the rich young ruler is, is saying is he's like, hey, I know that you're God. So I'm, I'm asking you what I must do to get to heaven. So Jesus is like, okay. All right. Let's see. What does he say? He says, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I've kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Amen. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left all we had to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brothers, or sisters, or parents, or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Wow. Powerful thing here. You know, this is, this scares me. This man came up like, hey, I know you're God. What must I do? And Jesus says, well, you know I'm God. You know God alone is good, so you know this. He says, well, do you know your commandments? And the man's like, I've been reading the Bible every day. I studied the Bible a year ago. Uh, I was baptized. I was saved. Or I grew up going to church all my life. Yes, I know the Bible. I know the scriptures. I'm, I'm obedient. Yes. God asked him, do you obey? But then he asked him another question. He says, you, you obey, but do you trust me? Wow. Wow. Do you really have faith that you have a home in heaven? Give up everything. Sell it to the poor. You don't need it. Come follow me. What an honor. Jesus is like, hey, come be one of my disciples. Look, Judas is going to fall away soon. Just come with me. <laughs> but instead, in, in uh, uh, another gospel, it says that Jesus looked at him and loved him. Uh, yeah. And he, he says to him, he yells at him, right? Mine has an exclamation point. <laughs> He says to them, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? He was, he was, he was I don't know what he felt, but he was fired up. Yeah. He was just like, man, like, you're this close. Yeah. Yeah. You obey, but do you trust? Right. Yeah. And we can always trust more to him. Yeah. You know, a lot of us, we, we go out, we work hard, but, but how much do we really obey him? And it's hard because everyone's, they're, 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 they're like, what's going Like, what? Like, we got to sell everything that we have. And then Jesus is like, yes, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Wow. Yeah. So even at that, you know they wouldn't understand because they would have already believed that they would have done these things. Yeah. Yeah. But instead, it, it will go right over their head. And it's, it's a shame. And, you know, there's one thing we must know in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. It says that if we are faithless, He remains faithful. For he cannot disown himself. Yeah. You see, God is faithful. It says he's abundant in faithfulness. And so if you're, you're struggling to really give up everything in your heart, if you're struggling to really be like, all right, I'm going to trust you with my life and trust more of my life with you, it's, a, it's an issue of faith. Yeah. And yet the solution is there, is that you have God. Yeah. And that brings the question, well then, where do we draw our faith? Yeah. Where would we draw that? And so Luke 18, as we continue, or continue to read, on, bro. verse 31, where do we draw our faith? It says, Jesus took the twelve aside and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. 
He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. The disciples did not understand them, or did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. Where do we draw our faith? I think, you know, for myself, quite often, I end up in that, that verse 34. What's going on, God? I don't understand what's going on. I'm stressed out. I'm getting overly anxious. Yeah. You know, just uh, just a couple days ago, we're now moving out of our house. On, and uh, we go to pick up the keys. They give us these little key fob things, uh, and we get four of them. And, and I was like, all right, like this is good. Uh, and so I dished them out to the other brothers that are, are, are going to be moving in. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I lost mine. Oh. I was like, I picked it up today, and I just lost mine. And then she's like, I, I remember when she told us, the, uh, the woman there, her name was Tanya, uh, and she was like, it's going to be 50 to $70. I was, like, oh, I was like, I just got my first paycheck from Sam's Club, and I'm like, I got to give first to God. Uh, and I was like, I was really just getting, like, I, I knew, I was like, I can't get worried about this. Like, don't, don't be worried. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's somewhere in her house. We're moving out. It'll That's pop right. up. It's just it's going to be the last thing we pick up. It's going to be right there. Yeah. And, and, but I was struggling. I was anxious. I was like, why, why is this happening? Like, what has been going on? Uh, and then it was awesome. Uh, it was all the way, like, late at night. And I'm, I'm driving with Femi. Uh, and Femi's like, like he's just, he's just like, like man, you, you love to worry. And I'm like, yeah, I know, bro. Uh, I was like, I was doing my best not to like mention it, but like you can, you know, you know when someone's acting a little different. Uh, and they knew the reason because I was asking them, like, you guys got the key fobs? No, okay, it's just me. All right. And, and then, and then, so then I, I just say to Femi, I'm like, look, man, I'm, I'm really tempted to be super anxious right now and just stress out. And then literally, like, we get out of the car, and I don't know, I was, I was blanked out. Also, I'm like, wait a second. I got the one right here. I gave one to Corey. And then John, <laughs> Jonathan has one. I think I just gave one to Chris, too, right? So I run, I run upstairs. I wake up Chris. I'm like, what? I got to <laughs> And then I'm like, do you have one of the key fobs? He's like, yeah, you gave it to me. I'm like, oh, God, bless. Like, amen. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, I, I, I was a fool, you know, and it was that simple. It was just that simple. And then Femi some more, just like, oh, you just love the stress, don't you? <laughs> Amen, bro, thank you. And, and, and it's real. It, it, it gets harder than that, though. Yeah, you know, sure. life gets a lot more harder than that. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was nothing. Stressing about a key fund, $50. Yeah. But life gets a lot harder, and it can really tie up, like, man, like, like God, are you there? Yeah. Like, what, what's going on? I thought things were supposed to look a little differently. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he tells the disciples right then, even though they didn't understand, he's like, this is where you have to draw your faith from me. And that's, that's from the crucifixion. Well, originally from the life, the crucifixion, the death, and the burial, and then ultimately the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, this is where you need to draw your faith from. On, this is where you'll get your power to, yeah. to have the peace, the peace that's not of this world, but a peace that is that, that transcends understanding, that is from up above. Yeah. So you need to, this is where you need to draw your faith. And, you know, it's awesome because it, it's, it's like a fear of faith. You don't know what's going on. But it's, it's awesome because, you know, this takes faith. It says that, look, I'm a man. You know, like I can come before all of you guys the way you can turn to everyone else and to everyone in this world and be able to say, look, when I die, I'm going to heaven. Yeah. I'm getting right back up. On, and it's like, that doesn't even make any sense. You know, for us to die is gain. It's on to glory. Yeah. And, and that's just so different. That's where our faith comes from. That's why we do the things that we do, sacrifice the things we sacrifice. On, and it, that's powerful. And, you know, for me, I always used to believe uh, in, in a God, in the one God, the, the Christian God. I always used to believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, the Holy Spirit. I believed in all of these things growing up, but I did not have any faith. Yeah, mm. There was zero faith to me. Because what we first read about is that faith is confidence in what we hope for. Yeah. So I had a lot of hope in this world for things I wanted to happen, 
but my hope was deferred. And when your hope's deferred, as the Bible tells you, it's like you're, you're going to feel sick. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. things don't go the way you thought they were going to go. Yeah. And now you're just like, man, like, why didn't it happen? And, and it's, it's rough. And the same is, the, the reverse is true too. When, when you're hoping for godly things, but it's still not going to end up right because you don't have any faith. Yeah. And, you know, it, it wasn't really until I had to begin to start studying the Bible and not just for like what people told me, not based off what I believed before, but to actually examine these scriptures, right. you know, every day and really be like, okay, this is the truth. This is what I need. I'm going to do what it says. And it's where faith comes from. Yeah. Faith comes from hearing the word. Yeah. And, you know, it's awesome because, uh, like I was saying, uh, what we first read, faith is confidence in what we hope for. Yeah. And it's assurance about things we can't see. So, when you have confidence about something that you hope for, you're going to start to do something. Yeah. You're not just going to sit around and be like, oh, I hope this happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think we can all be really guilty of that. Because yeah. uh, I know that's, that's how I am. Hmm. And, you know, if you look at James chapter 2, yeah, turn with me there. Come on, bro. Go, Mike. Preach it. Come on, bro. On, bro. James chapter 2, verse 14. Come on, bro. Preach. Yes, sir. It says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. You know, we read just right here that faith requires action to be made complete. You can't just say you have faith. You can't just believe you have faith. It requires some action. And you know, I really need to lift up the church here. It's awesome. Uh, you know, you guys have been cranking it for, for a, over a month now. Many of us have been fasting. Some of us doing multiple fasts on top of it. Yeah. Just being like, look, we just want the Lord's will to happen. We want to see souls be saved. Yeah. And, and it's, been, it's been hard. It's, I'm really encouraged by our brother Chris. Uh, Chris Hamilton really just set an example for all the brothers. Uh, when, when he's like, look, I'm fasting and it's for a reason. Yeah. And, I, and, and I'm going to go out now and make it my routine. You know, he'd work his whole entire shift. And when you get done with your job, you just want to be lazy. You just want to take a nap, eat food, just do nothing. But instead, Chris would go right from his work, which is down in uh, Clearwater, St. Pete. He'd drive all the way up, stop in downtown Tampa, where, where all the people are feeling good, when he's getting off of work, and go share his faith. And he did it nearly every single day. And he led the brothers. We were all inspired. We were like, oh, man, this guy's doing that? All right, we all got to do it, too. <laughs> and, and it was awesome. And, you know, for us as a, a whole, it's been amazing what we accomplished with missions. Yeah. You know, we, we blew it out. We raised over $80,000. <laughs> Less than 60 people. And this is the money that we were able to raise because we believe in the mission. Amen. You know, yeah, we, yeah. We, a lot of us, we went door knocking to share our faith, to sell lollipops, to sell cookies. Uh, and a lot of us, we just went up and just started asking for money. We did call-a-thons. We were just getting so diverse. We were calling up old friends' parents, being like, hey, like, I, I could use some money. Look, we're trying to we're trying to plant churches places so people can hear the word of God. And then God blessed it. So, family, I know we are working. And it's awesome because in, in uh, you got to turn there, but 2 Corinthians 10, 13 through 16, it, it mentions this, that that our, our faith grows. And the way we know this is by seeing... Uh, by witnessing our activity increase. And, yeah. and I just want to lift you all up because the activity at Tampa Bay has been increasing. Yeah. 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 And yet for myself, as my activity was increasing, something was still wrong. And I was like, okay, like, there was one day I went out, like, for three hours, 
I was just by myself. There's a couple things wrong. Uh, and <laughs> and I didn't have the heart, but I was like, I gotta just do it because like this is the Lord's will. Deny myself. And you know, by the end of it, I was feeling good. But at the end of it, I had zero contacts of people I met, and I raised zero dollars in three hours. And I was like, man, like, amen, Lord. I'm glad you put me out there. I needed that. And and I ended up then literally listening to a sermon. I think it was either that day or a day after uh, of a brother from Milwaukee. And the first scripture he goes to is Revelations chapter 2. So I want you to read this. Come on, bro. So Revelations chapter 2. So Revelations chapter 2, verse 2. It's Jesus speaking to us, the churches. He says, I know your deeds, your hard work, your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people. That you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. And this was where I was at. I realized that I had forsaken my first love, which was Jesus Christ. I was working more than I had ever done before, sharing my faith. I, I was, honestly, I was starting to get, I literally got three phone calls in like two days of people just like coming after saying like, man, you're, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And I was just like, it, it was like, I don't know, like this, I don't know what's going on. Like, why are you coming at me? Like, I haven't spoke to you in so many months, uh, but amen, let's look at the scriptures. And it was, just, they're just coming at me. I was like, what's going on? This is strange. This is different. And yet, Jesus says, like, look, you've done these things, but you've forsaken your first love, which is me. And, you know, this really, this really struck me. Uh, because, you know, your first love, when you first, you know, studied the Bible, when you first made the decision, like, I'm going to give my life to God. I'm going to be a disciple. Like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give everything. I'm going to sell everything for it. You know, when you first did that for myself, it was the most I had ever read my Bible. Yeah, it's yeah. true. I read the Bible in an hour straight, uh, seven days of the week. Yeah. It was the most I ever read the Bible. Yeah. Come on, bro. And then I prayed more than ever. Yeah. 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 Every day I was praying, night and day, throughout the day. And then I had people that were praying with me. Yeah. And this is what he calls us to do. He says, you've, you've forsaken your first love. You stopped praying more than you did before. Mm, come on. You stop reading as much as you read before. Come on, you know, what we read at the start too, it says that those who belong to the faith and are saved don't shrink back. Yeah. And so if you're praying less than you first did, you've shrunk. Yeah. On, if you're reading less than you had before, you've shrunk back. Wow. Wow. Thus, do you, do you really belong to those who are faithful and are saved? And Jesus, he lays it out to us. He says, this is what's going on. I know you're working, but this is the truth. But he says, you can return. He says, repent and come back to me. And so that's why, church, I really just want to challenge you guys to really get in it with your prayers. Amen. You know, we need to pray with cries, with loud shouts. And we need to continue to do all this work. And we need to have, you know, greater studies into the Bible. We need to return to our first love. Amen. You know, we we started fasting so that we would we would see souls be saved. Yeah. But in the meantime, we haven't. Yeah. Yeah. And and we've been working harder than ever. Yeah. Come on, bro. Uh, now it's just time to get our faith up. Amen. And God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so back to Luke 18. Come on. Yeah, Come on, Michael. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, 
have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near to him, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Powerful. You know, this beggar, he starts yelling. He knows his position. He's, he's blind and he knows his position. He's like, I, I, I'm a sinner. I need your mercy. And, so, and then when people tell him to be quiet, when people tell him to, to stay silent, he gets louder. He says, have mercy on me. He believed he, had, he, he was going after it. Come on, bro. And Jesus then, when you call out to God, it's not just there, then, and done. Jesus comes to you and he says, what do you want from me? He's like, what does your heart really want? He says, Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. You know, what do you want? Well, I want to see. I want to know the truth. I, I want to see all the things that have been kept hidden from me, the things I don't understand. I want to see Jesus. I want to see God's face. I want to know him. And, and you know, what is impossible with man is right possible with God. He'll let you see when you, see, when you tell him what you want. And it's amazing because to know the truth, you know, for me, I had to study the Bible. Yeah. On, and and I, I, everyone, we need to study the Bible. Yeah. Visitors, you need to study the Bible. Yeah. Not just because I'm a human telling you to, but because it's God's words. Yeah. Yeah. This is where his, his sight, where this is yeah. where the, the truth comes from. Yeah. Uh, and, and ultimately, you know, it's awesome. Because it says that, that upon, upon doing this, he follows Jesus. And he praises God. And when all the people saw it, they also began to praise God. Wow. You know, my first time coming out to a church service with all of you guys, it was, it was awesome. It was kind of reminiscent. Uh, it was in the apartment that we're now moving out of. Yeah. And, and so going in there, having grown up uh, going to a Catholic church, I, I walk in there, and everyone was just really praising God. Yeah. You know, it was the most I ever sang. I was like, okay, I'm going to start praising God too. <laughs> like, I've been quiet at every church service my whole life growing up. But now they were singing loud, so I was like, all right, I'm singing loud now too. And like, they're clapping their hands. I'm clapping my hands too. This thing happened. I was like, like, oh, they go a little quieter. I go a little quieter. I was like, these people are praising God. I had to join in. I had to follow this because I was like, this is, this is something special. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's what we get to sharing. Yeah. And so, you know, family... You know, faith, what it looks like is, is prayer and humility. And, and though I know we all obey, we can all trust more. We can trust God with more. We can have more faith. So return to the cross, family, and make your faith complete by, by lifting your voices up to our Father to praise Him. And I want to leave you guys with a song. And I, I, I'm, I'm sure, hopefully, some of you guys know it, but it's an easy one. But it just made me think of this. And it goes like this. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the days. Everybody. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all my days. And now I am happy all my days. Thank you, family. Let's play first communion.